Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about the basics of how to identify trees using their leaves. And I hope after watching this video you'll want to go outside and give it a try yourself. But as for now, let's go ahead and get started. To the untrained eye, it might seem like I'm showing you a picture of a leaf and a picture of a branch right now. But that's not the case. Both pictures show two different types of leaves. Cornish Drummondii, otherwise known as rough leaf dogwood, has simple leaves, and a member of the genus Fraxinus, otherwise known as ash, has compound leaves. Now, what's the difference between a simple and a compound leaf? It all comes down to the leaf blade, or lamina, which is a broad, flat area where photosynthesis occurs. A simple leaf will only have one leaf blade per leaf, however a compound leaf will have multiple small leaflets per leaf blade. If you look at our example compound leaf, it has seven total leaflets. A leaflet itself is a leaf-like structure that makes up a compound leaf. Now what about our little nubs at the ends of the leaves? Those are the petioles, which is the part of the stalk that connects the leaf to the stem. Both simple and compound leaves have petioles. However, only compound leaves have a rachis, which is the point on a compound leaf where the leaflets meet. A helpful way to determine if you have a simple or a compound leaf is to look for a bud. Here we have a photo of the stem of a Juglans nigra, otherwise known as black walnut. In this photo, we can spot multiple lateral or auxiliary buds, which are buds that reside on the side of a stem. A whole leaf will emerge from a singular bud. If a leaf is compound like the leaf right here, all of the leaflets will come from one bud. If you find a lateral bud, look at what is attached to the same node as it. A node is where buds attach to the stem, and the space between two nodes is called the internode. Any leaf attached to the same node will be either simple or compound, depending on what is supposed to come from that bud. So if you find a bud, follow the petiole, and if it has a bunch of leaflets, it's a compound leaf. If there is only a single leaf blade or lamina, the leaf is simple. Determining if a tree has opposite or alternate leaves is a very important step in species identification. Lanacera mackey, otherwise known as a burr honeysuckle, is a species that has opposite leaves. An opposite leaf pattern is seen when two leaves arise from one node directly across from each other. On the other hand, Sassafras albidum, or the sassafras tree, has an alternate leaf pattern. An alternate leaf pattern is seen when one leaf arises from each node in an alternating pattern. Okay, enough with the stem, let's move back to the leaves themselves. Let's start with leaf margins. A leaf margin is the outer edge of the leaf. There are two main categories, which are entire and lobed. Tursus canadensis, otherwise known as eastern redbud, is entire, which means that its leaf margin has no lobes, whereas Quercus alba, otherwise known as white oak, is lobed, which means that its leaf margin contains projections that extend from the center of the leaf. Now, let's dig a little deeper into lobed leaves and talk about lobes and sinuses. We already know that a lobe is a projection that extends from the center of a leaf, and if we take a look at our white oak leaf, we'll see that it has nine lobes. Sinuses, on the other hand, are the indents in the margin between two lobes. On our white oak leaf, there are eight sinuses. Besides being entire or lobed, leaves can be toothed, otherwise known as serrate, or they can be smooth. When a leaf is toothed, its margin has a saw-like texture to it. An example of this would be Populus deltoides, otherwise known as eastern cottonwood. We can take it a step further, though, and look at a leaf that is doubly toothed. To be doubly toothed, the teeth of the margin have a saw-like texture themselves. An example of a genus with doubly toothed leaves would be Ulmus, otherwise known as Elm. Lastly, for smooth leaves, there are no teeth present on the leaf margin. An example of this would be the eastern redbud. Veining patterns are also helpful in leaf identification because they influence the overall shape of the leaf. There are two main types of veining patterns for simple leaves that are super important to know. The first veining pattern is palmate, which looks like if you were to put your hand out in front of you and spread your fingers. Acer platinoides, otherwise known as Norway maple, is a very well-known tree that has a palmate veining pattern. 
The next commonly found veining pattern is pinnate, which resembles a feather and has similar parts on either side of the mid vein. Quercus imbricaria, otherwise known as shingle oak, is a good example of a pinnate veining pattern. Now, the mid vein is a central vein of the leaf that the secondary veins will come from. Like simple leaves, compound leaves can also be palmate or pinnate. Instead of being connected, the leaflets make up the hand or feather shape. Acer negundo, otherwise known as box elder, is a fairly common species that is palmately compound, which means all of the leaflets originate from one spot on the leaf. We can see that right here. If we imagine this leaf as a hand, it would only have three fingers because there are only three leaflets. On the other hand, black walnut is an example of a pinnately compound leaf. Pinnately compound leaves have leaflets that are arranged on either side of their rachis. Now we can take this a step further because some leaves are bipinnately compound, which means that each of the leaflets is divided again into more leaflets. I know it's a lot of leaflets. An example of a tree that is bipinnately compound is Gladitia trichanthos or the honey locust tree. As we've seen, there are a lot of small ways to differentiate between leaves. There is, however, another way. That way is to see if the leaf is glabrous, glaucous, or pubescent. A glabrous leaf is one that is hairless. An example of a glabrous leaf is the top of our friend shingle oak. However, interestingly enough, the bottom of a shingle oak leaf is pubescent, which means that it is hairy or fuzzy. Now that we're familiar with glabrous and pubescent, it's time to tackle glaucous. A glaucous leaf is one that appears bluish white and waxy. An example of a glaucous leaf would be the underside of an Acer saccharinum, otherwise known as silver maple leaf. You can see that it has that pale coloration to it. There are some additional traits that leaves may have that we as plant identifiers could put to use. Some leaves, like those of Quercus rubra, otherwise known as red oak, have bristles at the ends of their leaves. A bristle is a stiff hair that typically occurs at the end of a lobe. Another trait that is less common is glands. A species in my area that has glands is Prunus serotina, otherwise known as black cherry. Glands release nectar as a way to pay insects that eat herbivorous insects that could be harmful to the cherry tree. Stipules are a pair of leaf-like structures that grow at the end of a petiole. The stipules pictured are that of Liriodendron tulipifera or the tulip tree. After they fall off, they leave behind a stipule scar all the way around the twig. This can be useful for identifying the twig in the wintertime. Some species, such as mulberries, have leaves that leak a white milky sap when they're broken. Sap is a sticky fluid that contains nutrients or minerals and is produced by a plant. This can be useful for identifying some plant species. Alright, just for fun, we're going to do an example. Here we have an unknown tree species. Some of you might already know what it is, but please don't shout it out. We're going to work through a series of questions to review what we've learned, and together we will identify this tree. There are six main questions you should keep in mind when you're trying to identify a tree. Is it opposite or alternate? Based on the section of the twig shown here, we can safely say that our tree is alternate because the leaves are attached in an alternating pattern. Are the leaves simple or compound? They'd be simple, they are not broken into leaflets. Are the leaves toothed or smooth? They are smooth, the margin of the leaves don't have a saw-like texture. Are the leaves lobed or entire? These leaves are lobed. This particular species is interesting because it has three different leaf shapes. The first is single lobed, which could be classified as entire. However, it also has two lobed and three lobed leaves. All right, are the leaves glaucous, glabrous, or pubescent? The leaves are glabrous, but they can also sometimes be slightly pubescent. You wouldn't be able to see that from this photo, so glabrous is the right answer. Lastly, does this species have any extra traits? It does, but it's one that we haven't talked about yet, so it was a bit of a trick question. So I'm sorry for that. Its extra trait is odor. When you crumble the leaf, it releases an odor that is fruity and to me smells a whole lot like fruity pebbles. Okay, so what plant species is it? 
It is none other than Sassafras albidum, otherwise known as the Sassafras tree. Here we have another unknown tree species. So let's work through our questions and see what we come up with. Is it opposite or alternate? Based on our twig, it is alternate. Are the leaves simple or compound? They are compound because they are composed of many leaflets. Are the leaves toothed or smooth? They are smooth except for a few teeth at the base of each leaflet. Are the leaves lobed or entire? These leaves are not lobed. All right, are the leaves glaucous, glabrous, or pubescent? These leaves are glabrous. Lastly, does this species have any extra traits? It does. The leaflets at the tip of the leaf are red, but also when it comes to compound leaves, the number of leaflets in a leaf is really useful in identifying a species. This leaf has 18 leaflets, which is within the range of 11 to 41 leaflets that is, it is supposed to have. This massively slims down which trees our species could be. Okay, so what plant species is this? It is none other than Alanthus alpacyma, otherwise known as the tree of heaven. All right, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the basics of leaf identification with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.